Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? All right, there's always all kinds of disagreements about one thing or another. And even though I told you there are taxes when we exchange our IQD, there's people out there still denying that that's even true. So let's go ahead and go over this. We do pay taxes. I said it was capital gains. I spoke about it in a video and then down in the comments, somebody left this. So Michael said, at Snake Pliskin, that's funny by the way, only us old timers knew who that is. Title 26 specifically taxes profits on currency exchanges. Congress would have to change the law or IRS would have to make a new ruling on it. That article wasn't talking about inside the United States. If I remember correctly, it was about Iraq. I will have to double check on that. When he said Title 26, I decided to go look into this, like I said I would do in the video, and see what Title 26 tells us. So here is Title 26 from the IRS. Title 26 of the United States Code is a comprehensive federal law that encompasses a wide range of tax-related topics, including income taxes, estate taxes, gift taxes, employment taxes, and excise taxes, food taxes, breathing taxes, use the toilet taxes. I mean, they tax you for everything, don't they? Hmm. It was first enacted in 1954 and has been amended numerous times since then and addresses changes in the tax landscape and economic conditions. So paragraph two, taxation on currency gains. Section 988 of Title 26 specifically deals with the taxation of currency gains, which are realized when a taxpayer sells or exchanges a foreign currency for another foreign currency or for U.S. dollars. This section generally applies to individuals, corporations, partnerships, and other taxpayers who engage in currency transactions. Paragraph 3. However, Certain exceptions and thresholds apply to the taxation of the currency gains. For example, Section 988A exempts individuals from taxation on gains from personal transactions involving currency if the amount realized on such transactions is less than $100. Additionally, the IRS may waive the tax on currency gains if the taxpayer can demonstrate that the transaction was not entered into primarily for evading taxes. So yes, you have to pay capital gains tax for your IQD if you go to exchange it for US dollars and the profit is over $100. It used to be 500, they changed it. So even if you have to pay capital gains tax on your exchange, just keep in mind there are things you could do out there to offset the taxes, okay? But we're not talking about that. People keep asking, do we have to pay taxes when we exchange our Iraqi dinar? The answer is yes, if the profit you make is over $100. Paragraph four, taxpayers who have currency gains that are subject to taxation under section 988 must report these gains on their federal income tax returns. Form 1040, Schedule B, is used to report the aggregate amount of foreign currency exchanges during the tax year. And Form 1040 Schedule C is used to report the specific details of each currency exchange. So those are the forms you must file after you exchange your Iraqi dinar for US dollars. Now, during the discussion, somebody said, Pimpy, how would they know? I was like, uh, well, that's actually a good question. I guess it really just depends on how you swap your currency. I mean, it depends on the exchange rate as well. Let's say it, for whatever reason, ends up being $3 for every one dinar, and you've got a million of them. Obviously, you can't go into a foreign currency exchange center at the international you know, airport and swap them. You know what I mean? Most likely, you're going to have to deposit your Iraqi dinar into your bank account, and they'll make the conversion for you. And you have to pay some little percent, like 1% fee, to have that done. And as soon as that happens, you know damn well that bank's going to snitch on you. So uh, trying to figure out a way to get around it, I don't think that's a good idea. Why risk it? The last thing you want to do is be going to jail for tax evasions after you just got all your money. Enjoy life. Enjoy your money. 
Don't evade the taxes, just pay them. Paragraph five, currency gains are generally treated as ordinary income for tax purposes, subject to taxpayers' applicable tax bracket. However, taxpayers who hold foreign currencies for investment purposes may be eligible for the Qualified Foreign Exchange Contract Exemption, which allows for more favorable tax treatments. Hmm. So what does it take to qualify for this foreign exchange contract exemption? The foreign exchange contracts, also known as Forex contracts, are agreements between two parties to exchange one currency for another at the predetermined exchange rate and date. These contracts are commonly used by businesses, banks, and individuals to hedge against currency risk and speculate on currency movements. However, there are certain exceptions to these contracts that may arise due to various reasons. One such exemption is the no delivery or non-delivery clause in a foreign exchange contract. This clause allows the parties involved to cancel the contracts without physically exchanging the currencies as long as both parties agree to the cancellation. This can be useful in cases where the exchange rate moves significantly against one party, making it not unprofitable for them to fulfill the obligation under the contract. Another exemption is the termination clause, which allows either party to terminate the contract early if certain conditions are met. These conditions include a material breach of contract by the other party, a change in laws or regulations that specifically affect the contract, or any other event that makes it impossible or impractical for the contract to continue. Foreign exchange contracts may also have a force majeure clause, which protects the parties from unforeseen events that are beyond their control, such as natural disasters, wars, terrorist attacks. These clauses may suspend or terminate the contract if such an event occurs, allowing these parties to avoid potential losses. Additionally, there are exceptions related to the settlement of the foreign exchange contracts. For instance, a closeout netting procedure allows parties to offset their positions in multiple contracts, reducing the overall settlement amounts. This can be particularly helpful in cases where one party defaults on their obligations as it can limit the losses for the other party. And lastly, there may be an exemption related to the legal jurisdictions governing the foreign exchange contract. In some cases, the contract may be governed by the laws of the specific country or region, which can have a significant impact on the enforceability of the contract and the rights and obligations of the parties involved. Businesses are the exception and how you have to qualify for a foreign exchange contract. And I, something tells me there's got to be a loophole in this, but not that I want to go around and figure that out. Look, just pay your taxes, man. That's the best thing you do. One of the other things you can do to avoid capital gains is if you sell a asset, like the foreign currency, or swap it, and once you get your money, turn around and reinvest it right away. Like buy a house outright, pay for your house outright. That helps reduce your taxes as well. The best suggestion I would make when it comes to this is just get a tax expert that can help you with this. Let them tell you what you can do to help reduce the amount of money you owe based on the amount you get when you swap your currencies. So like I said, when you swap your Iraqi dinar for U.S. dollars, if the exchange rate gets up there to a level that you like, you're going to have to pay capital gains taxes on it. So I want to thank Michael V for posting this. Because of that, I was able to go look up the Title 26. I knew we had to pay capital gains, but it's nice to have a lot more details to go along with it that I could share with the listeners out there. I hope this answers your questions, and I know there's people out there jumping up and down swearing they are something different, and they're going to tell you different, but like I said, there you go. you just seen it specifically from the IRS. Thanks to Mike saying to look into the Title 26. That's exactly what I did, and then I brought it to you. Anyways, I hope that helps. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm out.